question that will require a bit of speculation. A um, couple of years ago, I was telling my mother about the, uh, the objectivism and ideas of Ayn Rand, and she said, yeah, that's brilliant, but I bet she didn't have any kids. And then, and then I but thought I'm sorry, about... What did she say? She didn't have any kids. My mother said that, that I bet Ayn Rand oh, didn't oh, have oh, okay. any. And then I started thinking, um, that's true, and then I analyzed her female characters. They didn't have any kids. So I was wondering if you could speculate, why do you think she didn't have any? And do you think it might be because she would have to alter her um, philosophy if she had to have kids, if she chose to have kids? Um, do you think it would lead her to some compromise? No, I mean, and, and I think she talked about this. I don't think we have to speculate about why she didn't have kids. I think she said it. I mean, she took having kids seriously, right? As I said before, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a profession. It's, it, it's a career. You, if you're going to have kids, you, you have to invest in them. It's, it, I think you take it seriously and you take it as a moral responsibility. It's massively time-consuming. And her career was as a novelist and, and as a philosopher. And there was no time for two careers. There, there was, this was the career she was going to engage in. And there was never any doubt. It wasn't that she weighed the two options. There was one career that she had chosen. She was going to do this career. And she couldn't conceive, I think, of doing something else that would take a massive amount of energy, like raising kids, that would involve in that. But, but let me just say, there's nothing in objectivism, as a parent, right, and, and there are other parents here that can attest to this, there's nothing in objectivism that contradicts having kids. There, there, plenty of us have kids. Um, and, and it's not like we're conflicted between having the kids and being good objectivists. It's completely integrated. It's completely seamless. There's no conflict between the two activities. It's just you have to make a commitment that this is going to be a, a, my primary orientation or a big chunk of my orientation. And Ayn Rand was not willing to do it because she had, she had chosen a different primary orientation. Can I just ask, because I'm not sure if I heard the question fully correctly, but toward the end it sounded like you're asking, um, do you think she, did, she chose not to have kids because it would have, I forget the word you used, and again, I might not I think I said altered, it right, maybe. But did, it might have threatened her philosophy yeah. in some ways? Yeah, yeah maybe she would okay. have to resort that, to a compromise. I have to say, I find absolutely no evidence in anything I know about Ayn Rand to think that, oh, I'm not going to do that because right. if I do that, I might have to question what I already think, like as a good little dogmatist or something about reality. So, But I was, um, that's true, but when I was reading um, her, why she was writing novels, not only um, her essays on philosophy, she said because there's nothing better to um, exemplify her philosophy than a character, and I found no uh, main characters in her book that would be a model for parenthood, because they were all um, independent, mature adults with no kids. So I was just wondering why she didn't picture a model of a parent in her book. I, I mean, I think of that as the, the it, that's reading too much the novels as their propaganda for the philosophy and not self-expression. So she's a romanticist in art, and it, it is essentially, her view is essentially self-expression. So I think it's, she's not interested in it. But that, there's no implication that you shouldn't be interested in having kids. She's not interested. She's not interested in writing about it, dramatizing it. It's not true that there's no kids in the... So there is a little bit in the Fountainhead, the, the midwife. And I think even more relevant for things... We the Living is... Kira, you meet her as a teenager... It is about family. So if you're, if you're interested also in her kind of view of, and perspective on family, We the Living is an interesting book to read from that perspective. But it, it's still, they're not propaganda for the philosophy, and you can't read them like that. So it's, it's um, if, if the, the books have a little bit of, of, about music, they, I don't, they don't have much about her tiddlywink music, because that's what she loved. And so you can't, is it, you, you can't, there's a lot of um, art to getting how to look at the novels and what she views and what she thinks or not. They're self-expression. But as she said, you can't get my whole view of life and so on from the novels and my whole sense of life, as she put it. Um, and I, I want to say one just thing about career, that what I don't think you were saying this, but you could take as an implication you got some kind of choice between having a family and having a career, 
I think, and that's not, I mean, you can have both. But Ayn Rand, I mean, I view her as a genius. And what a career is for that person is really different than for many people. It's all consuming often. Like, does Beethoven have kids? I don't know. I could well conceive that he doesn't, or he might have been neglectful towards his kids. Because it's, his career is all, it's an all-consuming passion. And I think that's what literature was for Ayn Rand. Um, and it, and, it, and it, so it, it's, am I going to write Atlas Shrugged or have kids? That's different than am I going to be a writer and have kids? <clears throat> okay, so let's start.